Hello, my name's Artemis, and it seems to me that there has always been a struggle over the existence of porn and lewdness in general on the internet. Yes, that's right, and many groups have plenty to say on the matter, using their own little power trip of control to stamp out anything that they feel is inappropriate. And lately, it certainly seems like this war is starting to heat up, and that's exactly why this week we're going to be having a little bit of a deep dive into it. But that all starts with trying to figure out exactly where we stand right now. So let's begin. Okay, so you see, this little battle of ours has been waging for, well, as long as anyone can really remember. But our own little modern era of it on the internet could arguably be started with the fall of Tumblr. You see, Tumblr started in 2007 and did pretty well for itself. It solidified itself as the home of fandoms and fat follow alike. And for about five years, everything was fine. That is until Yahoo spent 1.1 billion buying it and then tanked its value entirely. And then, of course, Verizon took over when they bought Yahoo. And then they banned nudity on the platform and put in some really shitty filters to try and, you know, m manage to figure out exactly what is an innocent lewd. And that didn't go so well. And that destroyed it entirely. In fact, that's why it sold for just a measly 3 million to fucking WordPress of all people in 2019. Ouch. Next up was one of the big boys. Yes, you see, it was another startup from 2007. Pornhub arrived and solidified itself as pretty much the home of internet porn. And that's a big title to have. At one point, it even garnered a better reputation than YouTube. And yes, it had some issues and some little kinks to iron out, pun intended. But ultimately, it succeeded. That is until 2020 when the uh, right-wing Christian group Exodus Cry turned up and decided they were going to start their trafficking hub campaign with the support of the National Centre on Sexual Exploitation. And with their support, they managed to garner an entire 2 million signatures to try and get the site taken down. Of course, that didn't exactly happen, but it has been an ongoing battle ever since, and you have to wonder if that's exactly the way it's going. And that leads us neatly to the hot topic of our current times, which is, of course, only fans. Yes, it started in 2016 and very quickly became a rival to Patreon. It was a subscription-based support service for creators to earn some bank from what they were making. And hell, they did pretty well, especially where they let sex workers actually turn their, uh, you know, trade into a viable source of income. Yay! But once again, up pops Exodus Cry and the NCOSE, yeah, you know me, to pile on all the pressure because they don't like this sort of thing. And pretty soon, Mastercard is telling OnlyFans, hey, you got to ban sexually explicit content, which is difficult considering that's pretty much the sole fucking content that's on the platform. And while, yes, they have you turned on this particular issue right now, it does seem like this is just the beginning of a rather lengthy battle. But I mean, who even are these people that are fighting this? And what exactly are they looking to get out of this? So the main little group of the moment is called Exodus Cry, which might sound like an awful kind of metal band that just delves into the Old Testament, but no, it is anything but that. In fact, this little group started off as a church-based prayer group that eventually sort of moved away from the church, or so it claims, we'll get onto that later, to try and basically put its message across. But what message is that? Now, they said that their main goals are fighting sex trafficking, child endangerment, and of course, protecting children from pornography. All sounds very valiant very noble, right? But if you dig just a tiny bit deeper under the surface, you'll find that these aren't just their only goals. And in fact, their other goals go a hell of a lot further. You see, the group has dedicated itself to completely destroying the commercial sex industry at all costs, regardless of what exactly that means or how legal it might be. And they have claimed in the past that, no, we are not actually anti-sex worker, but considering this fucking quote is in their mission statement, yeah, that seems like a little bit of a contradiction of terms there, doesn't it? But to get a deeper sense of exactly what this group is all about, you have to have a look at where they started. And that was at a little church in Missouri in 2007, which is apparently when everything fucking started. And while this little church of theirs is no longer attached to them, they do still appear on their tax exemption records. So they do still have a connection. Uh, it was called the International House of Prayer. I am not making that up, 100% real. Yes, there was a lawsuit. And that was led by a man called Bickle, good fuck fucking name. I like that name. It rolls off the tongue nicely, but what did roll off of his tongue was not so nice. In fact, should we go through some of his greatest hits just to give you a little look inside what this whole church was about? First off, there was the time he claimed that gay people would face the flaming missiles of the evil one, which kind of means that, hang on, if evil doesn't like them, then they must be good, right? Or does that logic not make sense to you? Then there was the old standby that the gay marriage agenda is rooted in the depths of hell. Nice, I'm glad we can tick that off the bingo form of uh, bigoted asshole. It went a little bit off the reservation with the next one, which was that uh, Adolf Hitler was a hunter sent by God to punish the Jews. 
Because, hell, fuck it, why not add some, you know, anti-Semitism with your homophobia? We got, we got to make you the truest cunt in the sense of the word, don't we? And finally, he just lost his mind entirely and claimed that Oprah Winfrey was a foot servant of the Antichrist. I don't even know what that the fuck is supposed to mean. Like, okay, dude, did you not like one of the books she recommended? What? But why exactly is all this so important? So what? There's another purse-clutching group of crybabies who are too scared of the way that some people are. Like, what does that really matter? Well, it actually matters quite a bit because they've got a decent amount of control and influence and they're using it. And the effects of it are pretty fucking scary in the long term. So the larger issues in this battle are actually quite concerning, and the weapons that people are able to use to get their points across are pretty damaging. For instance, using your religious pressure to try and lean on, you know, conservatism that feels threatened by progressiveness is a pretty good tool to getting people over to your side, and that's kind of how people are joining this battle all over the place. See, they've learned the right buzzwords. They've learned exactly how to use those buzzwords to get what they want out of the situation, because they've learned as well that you can't just come out and say that sex work is against God because most people will just disregard that. Most people will just brush that aside as your religious freedom but not theirs. No, 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 no. But what you can do is start attacking things like sex trafficking and some of the more hardcore pornography styles like non-con and the like. And then you can start attaching sex work to those things and finding that moral outrage and just being like, yeah, well, this is all a part of it. So now we can take it all down together. The biggest nerve these groups can hit is that of protecting the children because you know, trying to keep your kids safe in this modern world is pretty fucking terrifying and difficult, especially with paedophilia being so prevalent, so noticeable, and it being just all too easy for your own child to become a target. Which means if you start forcing a connection between kids being able to access pornography on the internet, between it even existing and finding different things that people have been linking towards porn, if you can attach all of that to protect the children, your child could be targeted because these sites just exist. Oh, it's pretty easy to take all of that fear and all of that protection instinct and target it right at sex workers and people who are just trying to make a living in their legal fucking rights. And not only are they able to hold sway over the hearts and minds of parents and people who are just generally trying to do right and trying to be moral, no, they also hold sway over the financial sector. They hold control of the banks because they know that if they pour enough pressure onto them, they will have to cave in as well because they are in the right. They hold the moral high ground, obviously. I mean, hell, just look at Visa and MasterCard. All it took was a bit of pressure to them and suddenly they were pulling out of these sites and then pretty soon when you can't accept payments, you start to sink. When you have these weapons at hand and you're used to using them, it's pretty easy to just swing that sword of, you know, protect the children or sex trafficking or it's dangerous to society and start attacking anything that you generally don't like and twisting the narrative to what you do like. And that only has to make you wonder what's next to fall into that little target sites of disgust. So what does all this actually mean? And what kind of effects are we likely to see from the groups like this doing what they're doing? Well, pretty bad ones, in all honesty, if all indications are to be believed. Now, I'd love to say that there was some sort of healthy middle ground here, but honestly, when it comes down to it, there's one group of people that are looking to express their freedoms, and there's another group of people that are looking to buy their own safety with said freedoms. And ultimately, you can't really have a compromise between those two things, can you? And especially when one side is really not looking for that. It's all about escalation. You give an inch, they take a mile. And this little cascading domino effect has worked for them pretty well so far. So there's no reason to believe that that's just going to stop. I mean, hell, they might start off attacking things like sex trafficking and online porn, but where does it really end? Their ethos is clearly quite against things like the LGBT community, transgenderism, and even abortion law. So where exactly is the line in the sand that they draw and say, right, enough is enough, because I don't think it really exists. And while at the moment we might just see them starting off with Tumblr and Pornhub and OnlyFans, Who's to say what their next target could really be? Indeed, the founder of the fabled Trafficking Hub campaign has already dropped a few hints that Twitter might just be next. And if that falls, everything's fucking lost, really, isn't it? There have already been so many little attempts to dismantle Section 230, which would then mean that websites, they're liable for all of the content that their users post. So we all know where that's going to end up, banning everything that could 
possibly contradict these incredibly strict bullshit rules. But there is a tiny bit of hope in this big, big battle here, and that is that OnlyFans actually ended up U-turning on its core policies. Yes, that's right. So they said that they were going to ban all explicit content, and the sheer amount of backlash that they received to that announcement meant that they've had to say, oh, okay, actually, no, we're not. Now, time will tell whether this is a permanent change or whether they're just postponing it for later on, trying to figure out the real PR moves of, of it all. But it does go to show that showing this level of resistance does actually have an effect. I mean, after all, business is still business. And most of the time, businesses will quite happily go down the path of least resistance. So while you might have these asshole groups popping up and throwing all their little tantrums, all you have to do is make it more. Just push your own outrage more than they can push theirs, and you're gonna win, because that's just kind of the way that this shit works. So stand up, stay educated, keep sharing these things, and every time that something stupid like this happens, be fucking outraged about it. Show these fucking ass clowns that we're not just going to accept this censorship that they seem to want to force on us. But there we have it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. It was one that has been playing on our minds quite a little bit for the last week or so because it seems like we keep seeing these same things happen to different websites. And, you know, they keep saying like, well, you need to create a safe space for this. And then people do. And then apparently it's no longer safe. So it gets attacked and shut down. And while there are a lot of issues to it, there are a lot of problems. Like these websites can all be abused and can all be used it seems like it's being used as a little shield and to say hey look what this tiny majority is doing that's really really fucking bad now we can take them all down and kind of begs the question as to where do we stop where is the line at what point do they decide okay this is exactly what we want and we don't need to continue attacking these sites because honestly i'm not sure that they're gonna just stop at the porn they're gonna go for everything else as well there you go. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Uh, and if you did, you might like to support us, which would just be the best thing in the world for us. That would literally be amazing. But hey, you get something out of it as well because we got good merchandise on display. So maybe have a little look at that. Maybe, you know, you could treat yourself to something nice or someone that you know, or everybody. Treat everybody you know. Christmas is coming up soon. And I mean, what, what doesn't say Christmas more than a fucking a giant paw cushion that you can smush your entire face into? Uh, still no shame about plugging this stuff. Right, dog's turn. Yes, thank you very much for watching. I hope this did inform you a little bit and show exactly what's been going on and why. I hope you found it interesting and you also enjoyed the video. Yep, that's generally what I'm hoping for. Um, if you did like it, obviously, have a little look at the Patreon because we can really do your support. We really value and appreciate that support. It keeps us going, keeps us able to fucking live. And that would just be amazing. Every little helps and I will stop plugging it now. But yes, thank you for watching. Hope you did enjoy it. Um, we've been asking questions at the end of videos lately and I should really prepare for this a little bit more. But um, let's try and pull one out of my ass. Uh, what's the most ridiculous justification you've heard for someone's bigotry? So what's the most ridiculous thing that they've used as an excuse to try and get away with hating someone or something. I, comment that below so I can laugh at them because that, that's quite an easy one to fill up with. Oh, but yes, thank you for watching. I hope this was informative and enjoyable. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see you next week, I guess. Bye.